All right, time to rebuild a um, electric fuel pump, or at least start to disassemble it. Uh, let me get a tray for some of this stuff. Okay. So, um, the electric fuel pump comes apart pretty easily. Um, and I've loosened a lot of this stuff already, so it's it's not going to be needing a vice to, to take it off. Pretty simple device. This one, uh, the I'll have to take this apart later, but it's just the the big thing in here on this side is the is a check valve setup. Um, there's like a little disc, and it it basically acts like a check valve. I'll disassemble this later. But um, it sits down inside there and, and uh, rides up and down. So I will take that out. We'll deal with that later. But I uh, just wanted to take this cap off. A lot of times I will actually put another nut in here so that when, when you put this cap back on, there's some kind of support underneath. Because when you tighten this down, this cap tends to crack because it's over tightened and there's nothing support it. So a lot of times I will put a second nut in there at the same height. I'll check the height and then, um, but I could deal with that later as, as we, um, as, uh, as we get, get into this thing. What um, I'm checking, yeah, this is pretty, pretty stiff. There's a plunger that rises up and down and it feels pretty stiff simply because what usually happens on these uh, fuel pumps is that the there's a diaphragm in here and it gets hard as a rock and it just stops working and so that simple fact that the, the that little plunger isn't moving up and down is probably because this thing is uh, is is um, hard as a rock this car that the pump came out of probably not been on the road for over 20 some odd years so I'm not gonna have much faith in the fact that any of this stuff works so I am just taking it all apart and cleaning it and assuming that the the seals aren't any good there's not a lot of replacement parts on this pump it's just really um, a couple gaskets uh, as I said the check valve is just this little um, copper disc so there's not much there that needs to be taken apart to uh, fix it's just it just is uh, it just needs to be cleaned and um, cleaned out probably a lot of just junk and garbage in this thing The, uh, these electric pumps, you know, I'm not a big fan of them because they're they're kind of uh, as simple as they are. They they have a lot of weak points to them. Uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back on here just to protect some of the little wires that are that are inside the the pump mechanism as I'm rolling this around because uh, don't want to break anything. That's not broken already. But like I said, there's a couple little weak points on this thing. It runs on points. So um, if I can actually take this apart and show you how the points work, it the plunger basically moves up and down. And as it moves to the top of its position, it disconnects the points, points reconnect, and there's a, you know, this is a magnet up here. So what the magnet does, oh my God, there's fuel in this thing. So there's actually still wetness. Um, anyway, the magnet, um, once it energizes, it pulls up this plunger and uh, moves the, the diaphragm up, up and down. And uh, it's a pretty simple design. But the problem, the weak points are, is the are the points that operate it. You know, as as a, let's say the voltage drops on the car, it doesn't have as much voltage. It'll arc across the points, and once it arcs across the points, um, 
the contacts get harder and harder, things get hot, and then the resistance changes and all of a sudden the points stop working. And ironically, boy, this is really seized. Let's see if this one's gonna break loose. I don't even see the slot. Um, ironically, so as, as everything gets hot, is when uh, resistance goes up and then the, the pump stops working. Well, when everything gets hot, that's usually when you need the fuel pump to work the most because uh, you're dealing with vapor lock and you're dealing with uh, you know the, the fuel evaporating and the fuel lines boiling over and you need as much cold, cool, you know, cool fuel delivered to the carburetors and uh, the fuel pumps decided that it can't handle it anymore because the resistance has gone up and it's just not delivering anymore. So sometimes you know, these fuel pumps weren't designed, you know, they're just, the, the, the Ferrari fuel pump is really designed to basically prime the carburetors. The, the fuel usually has this tendency to drain back to the, um, to the, to the uh, fuel tank when the car sits. And then what the fuel pump does is it, uh, it allows the, the fuel pump to, pump, to prime, the, prime the bowls on the carburetor when you first start it. It's also designed to be used so when, when you have vapor lock issues, it'll also help you know, the mechanical pump pump as well. Like I said, it's just sometimes it just doesn't want to do it when it gets that when it gets that hot. Let's see if we can knock off here with a couple taps. May not. May not. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so you can see this is uh, there's a filter in here. I have to take this off. This will pull that little screen out. I could do that on the vise a little bit better. But um, uh, yeah, you can see that it has not been run in a long time. These red gaskets are basically what the original gaskets were on this fuel pump. So these gaskets have not been available in probably 20 some odd years. So we definitely know that this is probably an original original fuel pump gasket. The next one that I have to see if I can break loose is this one. And this one might be a little bit tougher. I have to try to get a, uh, get a little wedge in here. See if I can just tap it in there and, and pop that out. So let me go get something, I'll be right back. What I'm going to try to do is just get this kind of right in between there and just give it a light tap just to wedge it in there. Got a cast iron top and an aluminum plate below. And it just needs to break itself loose. Obviously, it's been together for years. Feel it. There it goes. There you go. So uh, that's just a little aluminum plate. Clean that off. And here's the diaphragm. As expected, hard as a rock.
and it's still some fuel in there so you can only imagine what that smells like good thing you're not here to smell it all right so now we've loosened that yeah that center is rock hard all right so let's try to take this center without spinning this off let's see if i can get this that off to be very careful on this nut because I'll show you as you're turning the nut it will actually turn that pivot and you can break it break pieces inside there if you're not careful so really you want to try to keep everything kind of in line as you're backing that nut out this plate comes off and then this diaphragm comes out All right, you can see that wasn't moving much. That's pretty, pretty hard. And then this guy comes out. All right, and that's really basically it. So let's show you what's going on here. As this magnet, this is a just a center magnet that just slides up and down, and this is a coil. So what happens is when the electricity, that's the positive post, goes down in through here, energizes the magnet. But it comes up through here, and you can see there's a point set here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a point that rides up and down. And when it, when it connects, it energizes the magnet, and then it goes up, connects. And then once it goes up, it grounds, and it drops down, connects, grounds. So it'll just run up and down. And what you hear, the old clicking noise is click, 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 is this point set riding up and down. Um, what usually fails, two things fails. One is that the diaphragm becomes so old and, and stiff that this doesn't allow it to move up and down anymore because the diaphragm has gotten hard. The other thing that fails is, uh, you know, a piece in here can break because if you look at it, there's a lot of little pivoting pieces that need to work. And uh, if it if it doesn't, uh, you know, if nothing also works, you could, it's actually pretty ingenious how, you know, all these little pieces kind of work in, in tandem to break and make and break and make and break the connecting connector, but um, all that has to work. The other kind of little wires that you really worry about is I don't know if you could see this, but there's this little wire here that connects. That's the that's one of the wires that goes to the coil, um, and there's another one that kind of comes up through here, and that that connects connects to the points. That completes the circuit. Um, really easy to break. You can't connect it. I mean, it's really hard. There's not much to it, and the wire going in here is wound around you know a whole bunch of little wires inside of this this uh, coil, and um, Sometimes once it breaks, you, you just can't get it get it back connected. So uh, a lot of little pieces, but uh, that's basically what I got to do. So what I'm going to do first is uh, going to tape this all off. I could disassemble this thing, but if it works, I may not do it just simply because you you may crack pieces just trying to take things apart. I'm probably what I'm going to do is wrap this up really well, and then just try to clean this this uh, this rust off of here so I can I can paint it. I'll clean all this off too. Uh, and pull this you see there's the magnet that's that comes out of the center there's a spring and it, it rises up the other thing I want to check is there's a little uh, overflow valve here a little tube that just keeps uh, keeps fuel from getting sucked up in there it's like a little safety valve I'll check that to make sure that that's open and uh, and go from there but you know a couple little pieces that we're gonna clean you can see there's some rust here so that that definitely needs to come out we'll clean off in there i think that's brass in there so it shouldn't 
shouldn't rust in there, but this thing evidently got some water in it and moisture in it, and it, it just needs to be cleaned up. So uh, start start cleaning this thing up, and uh, and we'll start uh, we'll start rebuilding it. Okay, so I um, cleaned off the uh, the body and painted it, and I uh, got that all cleaned up, and uh, started to install the diaphragm on the bottom. Um, there's a gasket. There's a well. There's a the magnet, a gasket, a plate, diaphragm, then another plate, and then the screw. The catch is that when you're tightening this screw, it will tend to turn this rod because that's what secures it to this mechanism that moves up and down. But if you allow it to twist, it will go out of alignment. And you see how that like doesn't work right? So you have to kind of make sure that it's lined up straight. And at the same time, all the bolt holes line up correctly. So what I usually do is when I'm installing the diaphragm, I put the bolts in to hold it in place and then grab this with a pair of adjustables, adjustable, ply, uh, adjustable wrench to keep it from turning as I'm tightening the screw the, uh, the nut down here and that'll kind of keep keep everything kind of in alignment that way when it's in place screws are in it will move correctly so uh, on to the next step I'm going to uh, put the body in this is all in it's tight um, and um, we're gonna we'll put it in and fire it up now that I got the um, fuel pump back together you can kind of see what I meant by the plunger moving up and down. So I'm going to power it up. And you can see basically that movement is the rod that pulls the diaphragm up and down. As it makes the contact and that point drops, it energizes the uh, the magnet, pulls it up, and as it pulls up, it breaks the contact. And when it breaks the contact, the magnet disconnects, it drops, and it just repeats over and over again. And that's what you're hearing. So that's how the electric pump works. And uh, this one's firing and working, and uh, it's done. So there's a couple more things I need to do that I like to do on these uh, these fuel pumps is um, I like to put a little extra nut here and uh, measure the height. So I put it underneath. So when you tighten this, it has some kind of support under the nut because what ends up happening is um, there's two nuts here and what people do is they tend to over tighten them and then they crack this little cap. Uh, oh, and by the way, I, I polished the cap, cleaned it up, and, and polished it so it's, you know, nice and new and ready to go. So I checked the height of this so that it's supported by the nut underneath. I put a little bit of Loctite in there so that it doesn't turn, although it doesn't necessarily need it, but I just feel like if the Loctite keeps the other stud from turning all the way down, that way when I put this one in and I tighten this one down, it tightens against the nut that's already on the shaft. So there's not putting any pressure on this plastic cap that um, will crack if, if you over tighten it. That way, the next um, the next nut that you put on here is gonna be this, um, or rather the, the electrical connection is the next nut. And then that one tightens down on that nut and it won't, as you spin it, it won't over tighten and crack this cap. So uh, that's the final bit of it. Um, fuel pump is done. I think it's, uh, I'm gonna check it obviously with fuel, but the plunger seems to be working. I'm gonna check to make sure these connections down here are tight. And um, that's that's basically um, the, uh, the deal with the electric fuel pump on a Ferrari. Thanks for watching.